Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the new save file. I don't know why I said the intro like that, that was strange. Uh, but today we are going to jump in as, I don't know, maybe Job. I still haven't unlocked my stammer, I'd love to unlock my stammer. Um, Zach, Arachna, or we could just go for one of the vanilla characters and try, um, try and get some stuff done. I kind of need to try and get the D6 unlocked for Isaac at some point, and I think... I think you do that by beating Isaac as Blue Baby. So I'm gonna try and do that. Let's try and do that. I think that's how you do it. I honestly can't remember. It's um, it's been a long while. It's either it you either have to kill Isaac as Blue Baby or Blue Baby as Blue Baby. If it's Blue Baby as Blue Baby, that's gonna be an issue because I haven't unlocked Blue Baby the boss yet. Because I think you need to kill Isaac like ten times, and I've killed like, Isaac I think exactly zero times thus far on this save file. Maybe maybe once. I don't remember. Um, so yeah, that could be a little bit of an issue. I guess we'll just see how it goes. Um, we do have the rewake blue baby in which we got petrified poop straight away, but <laughs> we already have petrified poop, so there. But yeah, uh, pretty good start with the poop and getting all of our dippies and that. It's, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. I think we're on XL floor. Yes, we are. I could tell, like, immediately from just the way that the room looked that this was an XL floor. But yeah, getting those flies there really makes this guy a lot stronger on these early floors. And to start off, we get... Very, very good for this character. Uh, that might be one of the best items you can get this early into a run. Obviously, it depends on how often it triggers, but getting it this early should hopefully guarantee we get more triggers out of it. Um, I would like to say... Um, in terms of the question of the day to day, <laughs> I'm sorry, Petrified Poop, but it's Cancer. Cancer is my favorite. Cancer is the best. I haven't had the Cancer Trinket in a really, really long time. And I mean like a really long time. That is crazy to just get that as a random drop. Um, yeah, as for the question of the day to day, um, oh, god damn. This is, a, yet again, a question I may have asked before, but I genuinely just don't remember. What's your comfort food? What is, like, a meal that just just takes you back to a simpler time and makes you feel sort of much better? Because I've, I've definitely got a few. Um, one of mine, um, when my... Oh, that was a really bad hit there. I didn't realize the, uh, the fire from those guys spread so far. Um, yeah, I didn't realize the, the fire kept growing like that, you see. I'm a dumbass, that's why. Um, but yeah, mine, I've definitely got a few, I think, um, that, that I would say, like, my comfort foods. One of them definitely is um, is shepherd's pie. Um, for those of you that don't know what shepherd's pie is, please get a life. No, but uh, seriously, it's basically just um, mashed potatoes uh, um, on top of um, mince and gravy with usually some veg in it and it's i think i think shepherd's pie is specifically beef mince and then cottage pie is lamb mince i can't exactly remember the distinctions there is a distinction though but normally it's like cheesy mashed potatoes and oh for, i don't know what it like how it started but like whenever i was ill when i was younger um we had one of these little sort of pyrex dishes it, it wasn't super little but it wasn't like a full family size one and my mum would all always make me my own oh i mean Big sad. Um, my mum would always make me my own, like, personal, um, little, uh, shepherd's pie that I, like, just got to myself. So I basically had, like, a, a two or three person serving of cottage pie, and I'd just have that whenever I was ill, and honestly, it was just the best. Do you wanna, do you wanna calm the shit down, little fella? Good. I don't like you all jumping about all over the place. It's not, not my style. Um, got a mini boss here. Oh, we got one of the anal bead worms. Oh god. Oh god. Why did it have to exist? Why did it have to exist? Um, and yeah, goddamn. Shepherd's pie just every single time. I don't know, I honestly don't eat it that much anymore. In fact, I haven't had it in a really long time if I think about it. Um, but it's still one of those meals that whenever I have it, it just kind of makes me feel safe and secure. And it's just, yeah, whenever I was ill, it always, always used to be my go-to. Nowadays, like, my sort of, the thing that I make for myself that's more so like that. Ooh, very nice. We can actually buy both of these, which is really lucky. 
Scratch card is going to give us a rainbow chest. It's going to give us another scratch card. It's going to give us a rainbow chest. It's going to give us nothing. God damn it. Um, yeah, um, it's, in terms of like what now is like my comfort food, it kind of, it's difficult. It kind of changes. Um, like, I really like making a club sandwich. That's like, not super comfort food, but I do really love having it. And it's always something that makes me feel better. Also, that is a shit ton of children that you just throw out there, my good sir. That is an obscene amount of kids. Excuse me. This is an obscene amount of children. I don't need this in my life. Um, but another thing, which is... I don't know. I can't describe it as comfort food. It's, 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 I'm not quite sure what to call it. It's more hangover food than comfort food. But um, one thing that I absolutely love making whenever I'm like feeling ill or have like a really bad hangover or something is just a big old stinking pot of mac and cheese. Just an absolutely fuck off giant pot of mac and cheese and it's like it's like really really cheesy mac and cheese like like i'm pretty sure like a block and a half of cheese normally goes in it and it's oh it's just amazing normally do like a two cheese blend in it and it's it's just perfect i've been hit by you again really don't like this boss at all there you go he's dead go away one of the main reasons I really don't like that boss as well is it always gives you this stupid bit of corn, which I've literally never got past rank two, and it's just not good. <laughs> it's just not good. I'm just taking out the poop that they, that they throw down now to get flies. It's actually doing a good amount of damage. Nice. Check out the devil deal here. We get brimstone for a single heart which is pretty awesome i think i'll take that and i'll be on my way thank you it's been a while since i had a brimstone run so i'm very very happy about that um but yeah oh god big up big old pot of mac and cheese that'll just set you right that'll just make you feel good uh, oh infestation come on now don't be like that that is a dookie dookie item a very horrible item indeed. But, considering what I just was given in the form of the brimstone, I'm gonna say that I'm okay with it. I'm gonna say that I'm okay with it. Oh, I do not like this enemy. He's getting kind of difficult to hit. Ooh, the mitre popping off right now. Love that. Thank you for yet another soul heart. I like it, I really do. I don't exactly know what happened with that rebirthing centipede there. Another soul heart, the mitre. It's really doing a very good job right now. Okay, good. Another soul heart that we unfortunately can't reach, but still, this is just showing the true power of this item if you get it early enough. Late game, it's normally not as good. It's still good, but... Get it on the first floor as your first item room and you are going to be getting soul hearts for days. And considering devil deals cost only one soul heart this guy, very fortunate for us. Very fortunate indeed. Gotcha little fella. Didn't mean to accidentally blow that key away from me there, that was a bit stupid. We, this isn't an XL floor, no, this is just Curse of Rebirth, I should have known that already. I mean, I did know that already, I just forgot it. Good. Nothing here. I've gone all the wrong ways here, which isn't great, because I would like to get Boss Rush done, because we haven't done it yet. We have done Hush, we haven't done Boss Rush, so I would like to try and get Boss Rush done. I do not know what the Blue Baby Boss Rush unlock is at all. I have absolutely no idea. But I guess we'll find that out together on this beautiful journey. I'm really hoping I get something cool to synergize with uh, Brimstone, because, like I said, I just haven't had Brimstone so long. But, yeah, I'm just, I, I haven't had any cool Brimstone synergies or anything like that. Maybe, like, a, a Tiny Planet would be cool. A Ludo. Ooh, a Brimstone Ludo. We haven't had that in a little bit. That was the last time I had Brimstone, actually, but I still love Ludo Brimstone. It's very, very fun. Um... We got the horsey. Unfortunately, the horsey is not great for us, but I will take the uh, the black pony because flight plus a huge speed increase is very very nice. Oh god, that was a bad hit by me there. An infestation didn't even proc. Great. That's exactly the point in having that item. Uh, nah. 
I don't care about either of those, unfortunately. The daggers are good, but honestly, I feel like with Brimstone, even though they fire irrespective to Brimstone, it's not really the best idea. I don't really care about it that much, so I'm going to leave that for now. But yeah, the pony's pretty good for a few reasons, one of which is we can um, do care shrooms for free now, which is really nice. Because we can fly in for free and then use it to get out. We can go in for free and then kill these little home boys. What do you think you are doing, fellas? More soul hearts, lovely. And then we can go, we are. And hopefully, yeah, I guess if we, if we can get a kill from it too, then that's just extra lovely value. Obviously, this makes our whole thing with poops not quite as good because we don't have the poop anymore. But I don't really care about that. That's fine. Thank you. This is just fine and dandy. Oh, trinket smelter, dude. I don't think I'm going to be using you. I'm just going to check this for a secret room real quick. Lovely. Unfortunately, we cannot play this uh, this chest because it requires red health. It is a little bit of a shame to show up on this character, but hey ho, it happens. Another soul heart. Okay, health is booming now. It's looking good. God damn what I wouldn't give for a fuckload of bombs to just blow up everything in that room. This is definitely a room that I should have just used the black pony on. Probably could have killed those guys a lot quicker, but oh well. I need to remember it's only a two room charge. Three bombs, bomb spawn, random locusts when they explode. Enemies have a look based chance to spawn a random locust on death. That's a really, really good item. I like it. Okay, we killed everything in a single brimstone there. Yet again, though, we've gone very much the wrong way. At least we managed to get the item room, and it was a worthy one. Um, the locusts on death thing, especially if we can get our luck up there, that seems like it could be very potent. So I'm, I'm looking forward to getting some use out of that. But I, I like the I like the idea of the, the brimstone rider here. The black pony plus brimstone. It's very thematic. Is, um, is the Black Pony an item that was in um, Flash Isaac? I'm pretty sure it was, wasn't it? Because Brim both Brimstone and uh, the Black Pony were Flash Isaac items, which is pretty cool. Hey, there's a Locust. I always forget, like, what was and wasn't in Flash Isaac. Good, good. Damn it, it's up in front of the Soul Heart of that. This is a good room for a black pony. Very good room indeed, actually. That was sick. Getting a good amount of locusts, actually. Not, not a bad ratio at all thus far. Seems like one full brimstone kills these guys too, which is good. We're getting a lot of pennies on room drops as well. Haha, you didn't get to take anything. Okay, straight to the boss. Oh, it's Kingpin! Gross! Gross! Luckily, he is dead now. And we've been getting very lucky with our devil deals. Please, please, please just give us a lump of coal. I'm fairly sure, although not 100% certain, that he can't give a lump of coal yet. I'm pretty sure we need to kill him a certain amount of times. But I'm gonna hope for it anyways. Oh no no! Okay, we can't he can. We've just been very unlucky in the past. Okay, Lumper Call is very nice for us here. We keep on moving down. Make sure we take the Polaroid, not the negative. Can, actually, can we even take have we unlocked the Polaroid yet? I don't think we have, have we? We just need to go straight down and we can take the negative, but we need to still need to go to Isa. I love the fact that you can steer the black pony now as well. Um, okay, that's not, not a trinket we want to take because that would mess up with our ability to hold cancer. Okay, this room's over. I see. Oh god, that was a really bad hit there. I kind of redirected myself directly into that guy. Another trinket. You do your teleporty thing, my good dude. My good sir. Oh, dude, come on. Right as I was about to brimstone you. Is that really how you want to play this? 
keep our distance here and let Lumpa Cole do some stuff. Didn't expect that guy to fall on me directly from the ceiling there. I thought the room was over, but all right. I guess not. <laughs> God damn what is going on with the trinkets right now. It's just trinket mania. Yeah, another XL floor, which I'm not too happy about, I'll be honest. It means less Devil Deal potential, although we've been doing pretty well on Devil Deals thus far, so I can't complain too much about that. Yeah, do you know what? I could get uh, the Mum's Ring or whatever it's called, or just a fuckload of consumables. Wow. Oh, we have the Mum's Key, don't we? We should be opening chests like crazy. I forgot about that. Oh, this guy shoots now. That's something new. I didn't know about that. We've got a few hands. Don't have to worry about the webs, which is really nice. Lovely. And not too bad at all. Yeah, we got one of these Dauntless Hearts, I think they're called, that can be a little strange. I don't really know exactly how they work. Um, the ladder's not super useful for us, unfortunately. I will bomb you to get some Locusts, as well as our oh, Penny, potentially, and let's... Donate the rest of what we have here. Really should get out there and donate all of this as well. Adrenaline is unfortunately pretty bad. I'd look, I'd like that trinket, but honestly, cancer is just too good to pass up right now. Especially with brimstone, it's making brimstone specifically a lot, lot better. Right. Keep on moving and grooving. We're doing pretty well for time. Um, we're, we're definitely making boss rush here because this is Depth XL. That was... I, I just walked into that fire. I just did it. I don't know why, but I did it. I just walked directly into that fire. That's not the trinket I want. Oh, really? I thought that would kill, like, the whole shebang there. I didn't realise I'd have to re-go through you. Uh, what, what was this room? Ah, hello. Not too bad. Some rooms you walk into and you're like, oh shit, this room. And then he's like, oh wait, actually, this is very, very easy. <laughs> this is not a room I have to worry about in the slightest. I've been looking up a lot of stuff with, well, I say looking up, but I've been like sort of coming across a lot of stuff with, um... I don't know how that would work for us, but there you go. Um, a lot of stuff with like the AI art and uh, chat GPT, is it called something along those lines? That stuff's crazy. That stuff's like, like, I was reading about like, obviously plagiarism and stuff with, with especially the chat version. Because um, obviously, now that it's become something that people like just publicly, oh, we got a, a, a giant skull. Some stuff that people like, can just publicly uh, get access to, people have been using it to cheat their homework and stuff. Um... Oh my lord, the burn hearts. Unfortunately, burn hearts aren't very good for us, but still. And there you go, we get Hurst Hat. Beautiful. Beautiful. We've seen both of our item rooms here and our shop. Really no no need to go off the beaten path here. Um But yeah, people have been like using it to like cheat their homework and stuff like that. Um and I've been reading about it, and I didn't think it'd be something that was, like, all that detectable. I thought it'd be something that, like, teachers and stuff would have a pretty hard time detecting in certain regards. Ooh. Okay, this is cool. So every now and again with the, um, with the 2D glasses, 3D glasses, 2D glasses, that's just fucking regular glasses, you gimp. Um, we get, uh, this weird split shot, which is pretty fucking cool. Um... Yeah, I thought it'd be something that would actually be, like, pretty difficult for uh, for teachers to kind of see. Like, in certain regards, I realise in, in other regards it's actually super, super easy. It, it depends on the subject. I think certain things, um, these AI chat things, for one, they're not that sophisticated yet. But also, from what I've heard, they, they kind of tend to make stuff up. So, like, if they cite, if it's like an academical paper, they'll, they'll just cite stuff that doesn't exist. Um... Yeah, they'll just cite websites that don't exist and sources that aren't real and stuff. So that stuff I can get. But like when it's like storytelling and stuff like that, it does a very good job at laying out the groundwork. And then if you just make some small edits, you can pretty much hand it in 
pretty reasonably undetected and they do a really good job for you but apparently teachers and like they have like systems for like discovering it pretty easily and i was surprised to hear that it's like such an easy thing to be able to tell i thought that it would have to be something it would be something that would fly under the radar a lot i suppose it kind of depends on like for one what system you have to submit it through if you have to submit it through some sort of plagiarizer check i'm sure they now have checks for ai but also i feel like it depends on how attentive the teacher the the teacher is because i know that like sometimes you get teachers that are really good with their grading and marking and they will read everything you've wrote but Honestly, I, I, like, I'm I'm sure a lot of you already know this, but for those of you that don't, unfortunately, when you do, like, university papers, college papers, the marking process pretty much just boils down to them looking for keywords and statements. Um, chargeable familiar that stabs enemies and causes bleeding for three seconds, spawns a 1.5 damage buff aura while the knife is stuck inside the enemy. Give it a go, why not? Um, pretty cool. The fuck? Um, why have we breakfasted somehow? I mean, I'll take it, but I'm very confused as to why I've breakfasted. It's very odd. Yeah, I like the bleeding. That's good. Oh, really? It hits me every time. Every time. Um, come here, you. Oh, I missed with my goddamn dagger. Um, yeah, like unfortunately, a lot of a lot of teachers because they're grading a lot of papers, it, it takes a lot of time. Understandably, they have to find shortcuts to make it plausible to fit it in. But that does mean that some of those shortcuts kind of mean that they just um, they just look for keywords and they don't really read what you've wrote. Um, and that actually culminated in a few pretty annoying things during my university time. Not not specifically with my papers, but with a few people that I've worked alongside. One of our um, assignments, because I did computer science with games development, for those of you that didn't know, but um, because my computer, because uh, it was computer science with games development, there was some aspects of game design in there. Um, and one of them was that because I went to the University of Hull, where um, where I grew up. Um, we were the whole city of culture at one point. Like, for some reason, um, the UK, like, elected... Elects, like, different cities, the city of culture, and Hull was the city of culture one month, which basically was complete bollocks. It just... The only reason it got the city of culture award thing is because Hull's a shithole, and they wanted to try and make it look better. <laughs> that was pretty much it. Um, and, um... Ooh, that, that damage bonus is pretty hefty, although you have to be really close to get it. Um, yeah, um, oh, do you know what I've been forgetting? Lump of coal is absolutely wrecking kids' shitters right now. Holy shit, yeah. Um, yeah, and one of the assignments was that we had to come up with, a, an, like, a concept for a game that was built around promoting the city of culture. Um, and we had to come up with, like, a premise for the game, um, and quite a lot of other stuff. We had to go into a pr pretty pretty good detail about about the game that we were designing and then we had to actually go and make it um or at least make i think i, I, don't, I don't think you had to make the whole game but you had to make like certain aspects of the game that you pre presented and so one guy presented this like interesting sort of sci-fi game um and I, I can't remember exactly what it was but basically he took like a really cool spin on it and basically made it seem like it made it into the sort of this game where you were designing like a colony for like the future um based on what happened in Hull and the city of culture it was it was the premise was kind of hokey but it was it was interesting it was a good read i, I read through quite a few people's because he was part of like my my working group so i read through his and it was really interesting and he was already a pretty avid game developer so he he knew that he could make what he was writing about and um when, when it came to like getting them marked his had a few com it, like his was like uh um i can't remember what, what the grading scheme was at university now but for example his was like a c and mine mine was like a i think mine was like a a b plus or an a i can't remember my, my, my did recently be able he's his got like a c and his was a lot better than mine both in terms of premise and the depth that he went to in terms of like 
building out the story and the world for this game, as well as the the, the technical detail. His was definitely better than mine. Um, and he got like a C, and he was like, uh, what the fuck, why did I get a C? And on the teacher's feedback, one of the things that they cited as one of their reasons for not liking it was that they didn't like the space theme. So for one, that is opinion. It has nothing to do with how you should mark a paper, but also it was sci-fi. It didn't mention space even once. Like literally space was not mentioned any one time. He did like a, a, a like a word check. The word space was never mentioned in the paper once. And he, and he cited that he didn't like the space theme. It's like, and he marked him down for that. It's like, for one, you can't mark someone down for your opinion on a game. Um, and for two, you, like, you didn't even fucking read it. <laughs> oh, so people were pissed. So it, 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 we ended up, like, getting it remarked. Why have I breakfasted? What's going on here? What happened? How have I breakfasted already? Um... Yeah, so we ended up, like, sort of going against and getting it remarked. Um, which was good. It got it got remarked in the end, but we were still like, how did this bullshit happen? And yeah, like, st stuff like that. It's kind of a tangent off of off of uh, the AI stuff I was talking about. But stuff like that happens way too often. Like, for example, my girlfriend is in... Uh, one of her courses was, um, like, filmography, talking about how things are filmed. Um, and... Whoa. <laughs> what the fuck? Unused gain either a disease or medical condition for the rest of the floor. I kind of want to see what the hell this thing does. Oh, it just gives you a random book, I think. Uh, we're going to take this one, though. I like this book. Um, because it can give us some potential synergies. Um, yeah, so she was doing this filmography course, and the teacher put out this disclaimer. He's like, hey, no one's allowed to write about Breaking Bad, because... Everyone writes about Breaking Bad and I've been reading about it for four years. And I was kind of like, well, I understand that, like, you're bored of reading about it. But it's an incredibly popular piece of media that does what it does extremely, extremely well. It is a perfect subject for this topic. And most people have seen it and know it's good. So I really don't think there should be any reason why people aren't allowed to write about it. It just, I was like, nah. They should be allowed to write about it if they want, because it's whatever, if like, if they're passionate about that show, it doesn't matter whether you don't like reading about it. That, that That's literally, d doesn't matter at all. You can not like writing about it all you want, but if the student wants to make their paper about it and it shows clear examples of what they should be giving the answers on, then who di who gives a damn? I also just realized I've lost flight because I, I got rid of my pony. I didn't consider that. This guy's getting absolutely schmacked. Okay, there we got him. Got some stockings, lovely. Veil of Dodge, walking to a fire, idiot. Um, we got another breakfast here. We did get the Veil of Darkness, which is a random item, three black hearts, and a Curse of Blight. Let's just take it. What's the random item we get? Oh, my shadow. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I do love some my shadow. It's very good. Or at least it is very good now. It didn't used to be. Um... But yeah, like that that really annoys me. And just the way that they mark things in general can be a big pain in the ass. I remember, so I got really, really lucky in college. I mean, I was reasonably good at the course that I did anyways. I did um, triple triple IT, which was basically just, well, it was kind of like computer science. Um, you could do like one module of it, or you could do like three, and it would basically take up all your classes. So I did um, IT like a bunch of times a week, and then I had one lesson of science a week. I did basically almost entirely IT, um, and I really enjoyed doing it, and that meant that I did a lot of different varying topics. Some of it was coding, um, some of it was like Excel and documents, some of it was like design work. There was a lot of different stuff in there, um, and I got really, really lucky, because I was the last year 
um, in which the, the college that I went to, and I think most colleges across the country in the UK, had this system in which you could... Um, resubmit work so my it was entirely coursework based there was no exams um and you were allowed to resubmit your work basically your teacher would give you feedback you'd go fix that feedback and then you'd resubmit it for some reason and i, I am completely understanding of why they changed this but the the years prior to me having doing this course and the year of me doing this course like there was no limit to resubmissions so basically what the teachers would do is they would get all of the oh my god so much health they would get all of the um submissions done like a, a solid month before they had to be so basically you had a month to just resubmit get it marked resubmit get it marked until it was perfect and basically everyone got four marks <laughs> it was it was insane so the year after us they implemented a one resubmit thing where you could do one resubmit and that was it um and then the years following that, because I, I actually went and uh, and volunteered at my uh, college while I was in university um, as like a course representative. Do you know, like, do you know when you like go to a college to see, oh, does this course suit me? And it gives you it, like it gives you like a taster session. You talk to the the teachers and stuff. I was one of the helpers with that who would like get try and get people into the course. Um, and it was difficult because things had changed. So like I said, the year following was you only had one resubmit. But the years following that, they actually added like exams to the course as well as coursework. When I did it, it was literally only coursework. Um, and so it, the course became a lot, lot harder. Uh, but yeah, I got really lucky. I mean, I did pretty well anyway, so I didn't need to do many resubmits of my work. Um, there was like... There was like two courses that were like pretty resubmit heavy. The rest of them were like small edits and that was it. Um, but I remember one thing because of the marking process. Can you fuck off, please? Are you, are you all right? I'm just going to walk through. Really? I just got annoyed and decided to walk through. Um, but yeah, um, because of the, the resubmit process, there was one of them that didn't get marked very well. And, um, I had to resubmit it. And because the way it got marked, this was my fault, not the teacher's, but I accidentally resubmitted a piece of work that was already like an ear. <laughs> they were like, they like remarked it and they were like, hey, Luke, this is way better than before. But there was absolutely no reason for you to do this whatsoever. That's breakfast again. What the hell's going on here? Yeah, they were like, there was absolutely no reason for you to do this whatsoever. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Whoops. So I ended up resubmitting a bit of work for absolutely no reason. But there was like, there was like one course that we did. Don't know what that is. Squealy. Okay, nice. Uh, there was one course that we did that, um, we got Ouija board here. Oh no, false PHG. Um, tears down for a damage up, I don't think so. More breakfast. What in the shit is going on? More breakfast. Something has broken here. Jetpack. Cactus. Um... Yeah, there was, like, one course that, like... So, basically, with our IT uh, in college, it was pretty funny, actually. Basically, the teachers just kind of let us do whatever the fuck we wanted. There was, like, there was like the, the sort of poorly behaved slash bad mark group in which they watched fairly closely. But, m like, my group of friends, we were, like, known to, like, get on with our shit, get our work done and just carry on. And so they just let us. And basically meant that, like, there was almost no intervention from the w whatsoever. We could leave class whenever we wanted. Because most of the days we had IT literally all day. So we had full full days of IT. And, yeah, because of that, they just let us leave class whenever we wanted. Come back whenever we wanted. Like, we were allowed to watch YouTube while we were doing our work and stuff. Because we just got on with our shit. Um, and most of the time it meant that the teachers had, like, almost no need to be in the room. And they often weren't in the room. They just let us get on with our work. Um... And uh, there was one course that we did that they didn't really, like, they, they never really taught. They were more there as guidance and help. Uh, they'd, give us our, they'd give us our work, and then if we needed help with things, we'd ask them. Or they'd give us a little guidance at the start. But they never really taught us what to do, which is honestly, in my opinion, I know it sounds like maybe a lackluster education, but I think it kind of worked better because that's what it's like in the real world. Um, you ask for help when you need it, but you're not just going to get taught everything unless you go to a specific course to get taught it. Um, 
So I didn't really mind that at all. But like, uh, there was one of them where they, they really gave us no guidance whatsoever and they let us get on with it. And everyone did their work and everyone, everyone completed the course and literally every single one in the class, like all like, I think there was like 25, 30 of us, every single one of us got a fail. Every single one of us failed it. And they were like, what the hell happened here? It's like, well, you didn't fucking tell us what the hell we were doing. And it was one of those ones where it wasn't obvious. We kind of had to like interpret it how we interpreted it. And it did not go well. Um, and then there was a few times as well where uh, Ofsted, which are like the governing board for schools to make sure like the teachers are doing their job right, would come in and they'd just put on this whole show where they'd like teach for the entire day while Ofsted were in like watching them, even though that had literally never, ever, ever happened before. <laughs> I found it really funny. Um, yeah, just seeing them sort of having this little panic of like teaching everyone and it's like they never normally did that. But, like, sort of speaking about it out loud, saying how they, they, they worked like that, it really sounds like it was a really lackluster education. They didn't teach as much, but I loved it. Like, college was, like, the best time of my life um, in terms of education. I was... Uni was good, but it was stressful. I, college was just, like, fairly easy. Made some good friends. A lot of fun. Um, just kind of chilled. It was great. Just kind of chilled. Um, and like I said, because we were, like, the good group, we just kind of got to come and go as we pleased. It was ace. None of my other classes were like that. Like I said, my only other class was science. But um, yeah, th that class wasn't like that. But this, it was like, oh, you want to go for lunch at like 10 o'clock? Yeah, go for it. You want to go for lunch at like 2? You want to come back at like 3? Yeah, whatever. Do, do what you want. As long as the work gets done, we don't care. Seeing if I can get to a position in which I can spawn my shadows. But I don't think that position exists. Yeah. I was very close to him there. I was seeing if I could get it to work. By the way, these dauntless hearts are insane. I just, like, they only take half damage and they seem to just be, like, infinite. By the way, I haven't been using bombs this whole fight. And I have golden bombs with locusts. It literally makes no sense. What am I doing? Oh, bloody hell. I'm not, fa I'm not fast enough to get away from this. Can you stop? Thank you. Boom, bow. Right, we're going up, remember. Up we go. Okay, so Blight still, that's fine by me. Honestly, Sun card here, because it's our last floor. Go straight to the boss. And look how easy it is to get these Dauntless Heart back. I think the more of them you have, the, the, the more of them drop as well. So we're just getting a shit ton of them. Back up to full HP. Gotta love that. Some dippies in here, why not? Good, good, good. What the hell are these guys? Speed down? For damage up? Yeah, I'll take that. It's pretty good damage up as well. Quickly check this out. Doesn't matter to us. Lovely. Very easy kill on that guy. You stop it with the lengthy death animations though. Sinus infection. Great grab just before the boss. Gonna make things a lot easier for us. Don't know what item that is. Yeah, I don't know. If anyone can decipher why the hell I managed to breakfast certain item pools, do let me know. I'm very confused. It seems to be specifically like the chest item pool. The treasure pool was, like, buggered. Even though I've definitely not seen anywhere near all the chest items. The thing is, as well, like, it's actually exceedingly hard to breakfast on modded because there's so many more items. Like, we have, like, literally double the base amount of items in the game. Bleeding's so good in this form because when he teleports away like that, 
he technically moves a really large distance in a short amount of time, which means that bleeding does an excessive amount of damage. Yeah, you see when he teleports there, he just takes like 10% of his HP in one go. But there you go. Is that going to be a uh, thing he unlocked? Yeah, there you go. Okay, nice one. I hope you guys did enjoy that one, and I'll see you guys in the next one.